Hello, my name is Mike Badger and today we're going to be making a robot from recycled tin and junk and it's going to be fun. Hopefully that's okay, yeah. You can see my workbench there with all my bits and bobs on it. So basically what we need is some tin cans which are readily available for anybody who wants to look around. Um, always amazes me you take a a label off a tin can and underneath there's something actually quite beautiful you know they have these ridges in them to give them strength that's why they're corrugated like that. But, uh, you know, a tin can is a beautiful thing, you know. So all you've got to do is take the label off and it, all of a sudden it's assumed a completely new identity. Now, we all know what one of these things is, tin opener. So um, you've taken the lid off. Now we need to take the bottom off. And maybe this rim as well, although some tin openers like this take, don't take the rim, rim off as well. But just for time... What I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to use my tin snips. Now these things are readily available in Chandler's. Um, so you're going to need a pair of tin snips like that. You're going to need um, some little panel pins, the right size. Don't get them too small because you want to be able to hold them because uh, you don't want to be hitting the wrong nail. And then um, you're going to need like a little, little nice uh, light hammer and a piece of driftwood. Uh, off cut really um, and some tins and bits and bobs and stuff that are laying around in the bottoms of drawers which you can always reinterpret into different things uh, you know the world's your oyster and it's also probably best to have some plasters not too far away as well because we want to make sure that um, we don't cut ourselves, but we might do because, you know, it is quite hazardous. Uh, but it doesn't need to be if you're careful. So just treat it with respect. So, OK, let's get tin snips going. I've got an actual bigger pair, um, which I use all the time. But, you know, it's up to you what you want to, what want to invest in. They're perfectly adequate. In fact, I'll show you. So this is a cheaper. Oh yeah, that's something, something to be aware, aware of as well. Some tins don't have lids on the bottoms. They have a molded bottom like this. A lot of dog food tins and cat food tins tend to be like that. So they just have like a, 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 a lever lid at the top. So try, try and avoid the ones which have got a molded top and try and go for the ones which have got uh, rims on the top and the bottom. Can you see that at a, at a proper lid? So you get your tin snips, hold it like this um in your hand and then cut through it like that it goes through really easily and cut down to there so one straight cut down there now this is sharp as i said before so just be careful so treat it with respect push that down a bit like that and we get our tin snips and then we're going to cut along this, this line here cut along the line like that and open it up and when it gets to there we'll go the other way and again making sure that we don't hurt ourselves in any way there you go and all of a sudden you're looking at a quite a substantial piece of material there once it's opened out so what we'll do now is we'll just neaten that edge off and then cut along this line so push up and then cut so you push and cut you push and cut and that way we're not going to get any horrible jagged edges on the tin when you cut it because you know we're making an ornamental sculpture here we're not making a um, a toy for children to play with we're making something which is hopefully great to look at on your mantelpiece and a um, little bit sci-fi a little bit b-movie so here we go, we'll cut that edge off as well, 
again so you push up and then cut and that way we don't get any nasty jag jagged edges also best to put all your um opus because they're really quite sharp these things into a little bucket a little, little tin so they're off the way so now we've got a piece of tin like this you see it's golden on the inside and it's silver on the outside so let's make a little silver robot um okay so we'll just go like that gently open it out a bit so there's our piece of off cut wood which is laying about so let's think about that's going to be the height of the robot and um, so we'll cut that off about there Cut off the tatty end as well if you want, you don't want the label on it, or the residue of the label. And then we'll cut that about there I think, about in, in half. And then what we do is, we bend it like this, in half, that piece of tin. And then we open it out again. And then we pull these edges down like that get your thumbs in and try and manipulate it so it goes round like this okay and on this side here like that so we've got this kind of shape happening now with a groove down the middle and that is going to be our robot's legs so let's put it on there like that you see look like a pair of legs on there so so what we'll do is now um, we'll get our panel pins here maybe get that a little bit more in shape like that and then we want to tap this onto there not too far down probably about halfway down the edge of the piece of wood because you you want some um, relief on the other side. Put our little hammer, tap that in. One in there. Put my hammer. I get another pen, panel pin there. In here. Turn that round there. Like that. Can you see these like little pair of legs happening there? It's getting lots of shoots already. Okay. So we do the same on this side as well. Get your panel pins in. And then again here, down here. So there we are, we've got, it, got his legs on now, or her legs. Okay, then um, we'll use the other bit of tin that was there. Again, that's not quite straight there, so I'm going to cut that off so it's nice and nice and straight across there. It's again a uh, 90 degree angle like that. Pop that in there so it doesn't get in the way. And here, what we're going to do with this, quite like this line here across there, it looks like a, a belt or something. So. Again, manipulate it with your fingers and you know, just being careful of the edges. But it's very, very easy to move. As you can see, it's really quite pliable. In fact, you know what? I mean, I'll show you what you can do with this. I mean, a little tiny pair of scissors cuts this stuff, see? So you don't even need to have panel pins, um, tim snips if you don't want to. You know, if, you, if you really want to do something, it just shows you, you know. But just you know, let's just say, treat it with respect. We don't want to have uh, you cutting yourself. Okay, so now we get that on there. Measure that up with that edge there, which is kind of the neck of the robot. And get it in the middle. See, so it's the same distance on both sides. That's important. We want some symmetry here. Bend that over like that. And then we'll get another little panel pin in here, which will tack this onto the top.
same on the other side. So all the robots that I've made are similar but different because they've got individual characters determined by the size of the piece of wood you use or the the type of tin you use. Maybe you'd want to make a, a robot with a, a design on which is um, comes from a tin with different designs on Tins, Coleman tins. They're all open up in the same way as I, as I showed you. So now we've got this little body together. So a little bit of wood visible down the side here, which isn't very nice. So we want to cover that up because when he's standing there, we want him to look authentic and we don't want people to know that he's actually uh, got a wooden frame to him. So I've got another piece of tin here from which I've Opened up. Well, I'll use that bit for the arms, I think. And I'll use this bit here from the tin that I opened up earlier. So I'm going to cut that down the middle. And I'll actually cut, just cut down the strip like that. One. Get that one the same width, so measure it up by eye. Don't have to be too precious about the the size of these things. I mean, a lot of it is instinct and intuitive. Um, play with this. I'll just straighten that that edge off. Sorry again. So it's nice. Remember when I what I said? Go cut, press up, and then cut, press up, and then cut. And that way we don't get any nasty um, nicks on the side of the tin. So it's quite smooth, you know, you'd have to cut really push push your hand on it, but it is hazardous, so as I say, just be careful with that. So now we're going to put this little um, piece of metal down the side there, which again is, you know, it's it's, it's from a, a tea caddy or something. Um, so I'll put a little tack in here. That's great because these little panel pins look like rivets then, and it looks like these... <laughs> These robots have been ri riveted together. It's a little bit long there, so I'll just cut that down a bit. That's right, so I've got that side on there, and now we'll do the same on this side. See there, I'm going to use the edge of that tin on the edge of there, so it just looks a little bit nicer. Line it up slightly. Same distance as that one, so we want to cut that about there, like that. And all of a sudden, once all the wood's um, gone and you can't see it anymore, it really does seem to look like a robot. Obviously, the kind of robot that I'm making here is one that is reminiscent of when I was young and on the uh, kind of kids TV programs at the time. A bit of Flash Gordon, a little bit um, 1950s B-movie type of robot, not so much the um, Transformer robots and the game stuff that you get on video games and stuff like that, which came a lot later. Okay, so now um, another piece of tin here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it down the middle like that again just by eye doesn't have to be exactly the middle but you know do it by eye it's more, more or less the same and again uh, holding it between your thumbs and your fingers just try and press down there like that and give it a little bit of a shape like that so you're making this kind of u shape in it I've decided i'm going to give him gold arms because his body's silver and it's, it's just a bit of a contrast so again just 
fold in your turn round. Obviously, you're going to be folding it along the the length of the grooves that way and not that way because if you did it that way, it'd kink. Because uh, so you so you you're using these these grooves which are put into the tins to strengthen them. You know that, that's what what they're for, so they don't dent in there when they're getting transported. So okay, so we've got one potential arm here. So again, I push that down the side there, and that we'll put it on that that way round. So the so the gold's kind of facing that way. So and we turn it around there like that, and then we get another panel pin here. Remember, get it level up to the top there, and then it gets a little bit harder when you going through two pieces of tin but it's still very easy to go through okay that's that one done and then get another line here and then before we fold that round i'm going to get this one in because if you hit it on there it'll flatten that so you've got to think about the uh, the process here so here I'm going to do the same so again but now I'm going to use the edge of the bench now or you could use a, the edge of a vice or you know, but if you put it on there like that using the edge of the bench you get your panel pin now a bit so you can hold it get that up to the top there nice and neat you have the hammer do the work. Okay, and then we get another one at the top. Okay, so then you've got something like this, which is um, kind of see his arms and his legs now. But those arms are a bit too wide, so what we're going to do is. Bend these round a bit like this. Using brute brute strength. Maybe get a pair of bull nose pliers. These are really really handy as well. And then just follow up round there like that. Get it started at least. That's it. And then same here. And then it's a bit easier to fold round. So then we want to get these like this that's it Put them right the way around like that you don't need any more nails in and then can you see where they do the same on this one fold it under that's the one there so there we've got a robot which is in need of a head and in need of some feet or a stand. It doesn't need to have necessarily have proper feet, but it's up to you how far you want to go with this um, and how much you wish to embellish the robot. This is just a very basic way of me showing you um, how it can be done. So this is the bottom of a Coleman's mustard tin, which I've just made a yellow submarine from. Um, but you see the bottom here, so if you cut down there and take take the bottom off there, you get this. So I think it just it was just laying there that second. Another thing is, that, you know, to allow the. Um, I always think I like to make this let let the sculpture make itself in some ways because you never know what you're going to find, and you got like me, and you got all this like kind of junk around and everything. It's it's nice for it to, to just reach out and find something, and then it, it makes it really fun. Um, so that could really. Quite like that, like it's actually on the top there, like that. Let's let go. Shoulders, do I like it? I don't know. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna use this for something else. I'm gonna cut the corners like this here on this. Sharp those edges anyway, and then I'm gonna tap them down like this. That 
way there's no sharp edges and i'm going to use that as the stand actually or the, the feet i think i think that'll look pre pretty good but before i do that i'm going to sort out the neck there's another just a leftover piece of gold tin here which is which is really quite nice so if i yeah i think that's going to look better so what i'm going to do is put that down a bit a bit too long Put all the, uh, the offcuts in here, and then I'm going to get my. Oh yeah, I really like that. Okay, so I'm going to bend that down like that there, like that, and then I'm going to get my one of those pliers. Yeah, that's good. Get rid of these sharp corners by bending them over like that and I give it a nice kind of sci-fi look to it as well squeeze them yeah that's that's nice okay, I, I like the look of that okay so now we're going to get a couple of panel pins in the top here and that is going to keep that top bit on. So tap around the edge and rid of any little sharp edges that there might be in the hammer. That's kind of looking good now. It's kind of looking like a proper robot. Okay. Now um it's up to you which you what you want to use for the head. I mean I, I've used all kinds of stuff. This guy is kind of like uh, I found this piece of plastic and so he's kind of like a cat robot this this fella because I quite like his his um sinister looking horns or ears whatever. Um but then again, you might find a nice old light bulb, which uh, has got an interesting shape. And maybe that would like work. And um, or maybe the disc. This fella is actually made out of lead. It's very very easy to cut. It's quite expensive, but it's got a really nice patina to it, and a really nice kind of retro, kind of almost Dadai esque kind of feel to it. And for this, this he's got a, a perfume bottle. An inverted perfume bottle as a head which is a really interesting shape which I love so they're all up there I'll put them up there to protect me and I found a load of these in a car boot sale once just old valves from um, I suppose from amps and transistors raid radios or what, valve valve amps and valve radios and stuff a little different different shapes so you get you know different sizes for different robots and stuff but um i think i'm going to use a small one for for this one we don't you know we want it to kind of be be in proportion so this is head so how do we now attach this onto here well as you can see it's got these um little spikes on there and i i have punched holes in before to get this in but to do it a quick quicker way would be to find a piece of tin like this which is again just um left over from um a previous sculpture that i've that i've made i kind of i cut it there so it's a little bit longer than what i need and then you fold that bit over like this and then let's see how we'll do this place here and then you get that bit over there and you make like a little lip on like that Let's reduce that size so it's slightly slightly there and then once that's bent that way and that's bent that way then you can bend it over and you can squeeze them together like that 
and you've made like a collar now and push them together like that so you've made this kind of ring which is being held together by these two lips that you've put on the on the tin we put that in there that's going to fit in there nicely so it actually needs to be a little bit tighter so what we're going to do is make this a little bit longer and then it'll be a bit tighter for the right side of it it's all experimental adjustment knife for the collar that should be better too tight and it won't go in and too loose and it won't stay there so and then we're going to get a nice little piece of tin or actually that's a little piece of brass I had which is uh, just laying around again so I'll use that cut that off there just cut it into a little strip like that get our full nose pliers and fold that over like that it's a bit thicker the brass actually but uh and if i push that on there like that can you see the way i've got that now to slot onto there like that which is great This will fit in. Yes, that'll fit in nicely. Yes, perfect. Okay, so I'll just give that a little squeeze there, a little squeeze there. We've got this kind of shape. So now what we've got to do is tap that onto there, and then we can put the head on the top. So I'm now going to put a panel pin in there. But we don't want to put it on there and crush the front and damage the front. So I'm actually going to put it on my knee here and push that through there so the brush is a bit thicker than the tip there we go it's doing that off that's great haven't damaged the front either Right, that's through now. We also don't want the pin to go through and damage the front here, so just beware of the of the of the um yeah, right okay so now we're gonna put this these nice little we're gonna use the um the, the yellow as well to give it a little bit of colour on it. So then um, we'll get this here and we're gonna do the same again. Again I don't want to damage the the thing, I'll just put it on there. I've got a couple of panel pins in here for this for the stand or for the feet. Try and keep it symmetrical again. So now that's the stand done. So all we got to do now is uh, put the head on, see if it fits. Yeah. Okay. And there we have a robot. Hope you enjoyed it. him there next to his mates. It's like a mother, a father and a child, isn't it? Cheers. <laughs>